yeah, let me show you the compositing part. Okay, so we are back in Nuke. Uh, we checked how to do the tracking. And now let's go through the compositing section. Nothing too crazy. So let's start with the shadows first. Like I was showing you, you get the key and the environment. You break them out in, with two shuffles. So you get both of them. You mask the first one. The way to do that is get your, just get your plate, do a luminance key. You go under alpha, that's how it looks like. Blur it out just a bit, and then you mask it using mask here. I think multiply works as well. Yeah. And mask it like that. That will give us the impression we have that, that we have some fake uh, detail that we don't. So this one, you just max on top like so. So uh, remember, everything that's white will actually be darkened. And then you mask it again with a key light. So you just key the, the sky, which in our case is blue. So that's very fortunate for us. Uh, otherwise, you would have to do either roto or yeah, have good luck uh, with keying <laughs> if it's not a blue sky. Uh, and then you mask this out as well. So what that will do as you see before, we just had this top that didn't do anything. And now it kind of, it's going to look like we actually have modeled this whole thing, which we didn't. And then you mask it out. See, and it's going to look correct. Uh, granted, in some areas, it's a bit too much, but all of that gets covered anyway when you start plussing things on top. So it's not going to be visible anyway. Cool, cool. All right, let's see what else. Uh, here we do another key, same thing, and then multiply it down even more to do the same similar kind of mask. So this is our emissive pass, emission pass, and then color correct it down. And I'm only using this for the light interaction. I guess I do two glows on top of each other and then mask it. So that's what you get again the same thing you get those fake kind of details a bit of color correction uh i think with this yeah I, i'm just using a a blank merge so i'm mixing it with nothing which will over time dissipate it as you can see with this ramp and then just plussing this on top Maybe I could remove a bit more of this. Uh, it's so tricky. You need the light interaction to make it look real, but if you overdo it, it's going to look fake. So uh, let's see, what were we doing here? Oh, okay, so this is the light interaction, but for the other environment. So I just copied the alpha that I got here. Uh, sorry, that I got from the key, from this key. I copy it here and then I pre-multiply everything, which will do this. I roto out the middle. I do the same animation over time, color correct it. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, so this was just uh, overall uh, making it less obvious because you really want just a bit of that. See, now it feels quite real. Just a bit of that uh, light interaction happening. And then the main part is this chunk, which is the our, our main effects. You can see I wasn't even denoising this part. Uh, it was looking quite good once you put everything together. It didn't feel like it needs denoising, although Maybe for the final, final uh, output, I will denoise it. Uh, but yeah, so we bring everything in. Uh, I split it into different passes. I, I'm using this utility split channel. So if I go here, utility split channel, split channels, it, and you can say, I want all of these, except it's going to split them out like this. Super handy. 
although it's it it is using the old uh shuffle but i guess it's fine um uh, it worked for ages so <laughs> it works now as well but that's how i split it so it's a bit faster so you don't have to do it manually and then you know just a bit of correction just tiny bit of glow you plus everything together um uh, i was showing you so once you have this i wanted less highlights on the smoke in the beginning and what you do is you just create a, a roto and then you put this into a mask and you gain it down and that's it and then i was animating the opacity of the roto so over time over time this dissipates and it starts blending with the smoke at the top but here it's quite uh it's pushing down the the, the key light quite a lot that this is an example where it would be better if I just had this split, so the explosion and the smoke separately, but it was working fine. Uh, just a bit of highlights correction, so it's a bit more on the blue side because once you placed it with the blue light, this was helping just a tiny bit. You can see it's not a lot, but because everything is blue, you would expect these shadows to be a bit more blue. Um, you can kind of see here in the shadows how blue bluish this is so maybe even this is not blue enough so let's go into our luma maybe brighten this up a bit so yeah we start getting some of that blue in the shadowy parts uh, motion blur, some color correct that's probably blank. Oh, just a bit of reduction in the saturation. Just a tiny bit. Blacks match. So this, uh, you, what you do is you give it a constant, which is the same. So what you do is you go to your plate that you're going to be matching. So you look at the shadows here. You look at the shadows here, right? And you would just take your, sorry, I got lost. Take your constant and you pick, you pick this color or you pick the shadowy color like that, which is this. And then if you look at your blacks, that it's going to be matching it to the black levels of the environment. Maybe, let me see what I had before. I think before it was a bit darker. Yeah, so I just want it to be lifted just a bit. And you do this before, you do this on the unpremultiplied pass. And then you pre-multiply it. Otherwise, you will get this dark all over the place, which means it's going to affect the other image as well. So, hmm. yeah. So you can see it's affecting everything now because we are affecting the whole image. So you do need to pre-multiply it, and then we stencil out. If you look at this, this is our alpha, right? Here uh, from, so we do a key light and then a roto. So we get the rest of the environment and we essentially just mask out these trails with this stencil like that. So it feels like they're coming from behind the building. Not coming from, they are going behind the building. So that will give it more, uh, see this guy coming here. Although there's something happening <laughs> here, but it's fine. Nobody will see it. Uh, and so these guys are coming in front and everything else is kind of going behind the building. Makes it a bit more integrated in the shot. Uh, what else? Try doing some sharpening, didn't like it. 
I usually don't like over sharpening things. <clears throat> uh, camera shake, camera shake, Kronos for just this front part. I'm retiming it from one, going to two, and then back to one. And that will just give it a kick. And then Luma grain at the end, just to give it some grain throughout the whole image on everything. And with Luma grain, you there's a saturation. I don't like saturation in my grain. So I, I just re remove it just so you get that filmic look. And that's everything. And then you do a crop. So you're like, yep, super cinematic now. Although I think we are maybe overdoing the crop here just a bit, but it does look more cinematic. All right. I hope this wasn't too confusing. Uh, but you are getting all the files for yourself so you can play and test everything and try on your own. Uh, I do want to say uh, we do have, so you can try Axiom for free. All of the explosions and everything here was done with Axiom, obviously. Uh, try it for free and then if you like it, you can purchase a license. Uh, if you don't like it, then, uh, you know, don't use it. <laughs> and also we have a Discord page. Uh, well, it's going to be in the description down below. Uh, that you can join. We have a lot of members just sharing their tips and tricks in general, not just Axiom related. So join us and we're going to have a, an FX party there. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, thanks everybody for sticking till the end and I hope you find this project useful. I hope it serves you well and see you in uh, the next one. Bye-bye.